Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's high time to pay attention to some innovation and some technology. Um, why? Because innovation and technology is what drives our industry forward, whether it's efficiency and cost, safety, sustainability, or last mile mobility. The good news is that never in our history technology has been so accessible. The fleet industry is exploring IoT, connectivity, telematics, and even AI, be it within the confines and regulations and, of course, employee acceptance. The challenge for 2022 will be how to make all that technology accepted by the customers and how can they increase fleet utilization, sustainability, and ultimately cost control. Let's see how we can do that best. And we do that with Christoph Ludewig. He is the Vice President OEM Europe at Geotap. Christoph, welcome. Welcome in Brussels. My second guest is Adam French, Director Enterprise Partnerships at What Three Words. And my third guest this afternoon is Erminio Di Paola, Vice President Product Manager management, sorry, and head of fleet and supply chain solutions at Here Technologies. Gentlemen, welcome in Brussels. There are two microphones and you can share them, <laughs> okay? Um, we will do the same as we did for the other panels. Uh, normally, there is a figure that will show up on the screen if technology is working well. The clicker, okay, it's up to me, sorry. 76% is showing up on screen. It's related to innovation and technology, connectivity. What could it be? Start. First of all, good afternoon, and also to you, to my uh, partner here in this chat. So, um, your technology is... <laughs> I was talking about the figure. The figure. Yes. 76%. Do you know what it is? 76%? Ah, I thought that 76% was the people attending. No, 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 no. No, it's not the people attending. I say they set the stage, no. Okay. 76% is the percentage of companies that have responded in our survey that they are using less than half of the capabilities of the technology system, the connectivity system, the data system in the vehicles and for the fleet. So companies that are even having telematics and connectivity in their fleet, 76% are confirming that they are using less than 50% of the capabilities. Can you tell me why? I, I have an opinion. I don't know why. If I had the answer, I would have been uh, not here, probably. <laughs> so, uh, we have an op uh, a perception. So there is the technology seen like intrusive to drivers, first of all. And it's our time to understand how technology gives the return of the investment because it's seen something that is also uh, changing my driver behavior. There is this mindset of being controlled. Mm -hmm by my dispatcher and last but not least if i have to integrate the different fleets in my back-end systems nowadays today unfortunately there is still not unified data sets so it's perceived like something that is nice to have but not yet a must to have actually this was probably a couple of years ago mm -hmm. so i'm pretty sure that if we do the same survey in six to 12 months from now you will be surprised and see the much higher adoption of it okay we can do that that's no problem at all uh christoph you would like to add something yes uh, sure i think one part is, is having access to the data and having the connectivity but the other part is obviously using it and making use of that so there is a, a transition from data to information and knowledge that's absolutely necessary. So we don't want the fleet manager to analyze the data, but we want to provide solutions and reports, rules, and so on, analytics. That's the important part, to so make life for the fleet manager easier. And I think once you have this mindset, um, then the adoption will increase because then it's really 
an asset and, and helpful to the fleet manager, not just a bunch of data he has to analyze. I think that's the important thing. Is your microphone on? Yes, uh, okay, perfect. Um, okay, then also, Adam, uh, you are rep representing What Rewards. Um, what is your opinion about the uptake of connected technology within corporates? I think I agree with the uh, other two panelists in that uh, any technology used uh, in, by the fleet manager and also by the driver has to be useful. Um, so there's no point pushing different tech stacks and, and different uh, technology onto the driver or the fleet manager if they're not going to find that useful in any way, shape or form. We're drilling, uh, in, especially in sort of last mile logistics with quite traditional industries um, and the driver you know, will have his own set way of doing things as well as the fleet manager as well. So the technology has to add value in the first place. And I think that's probably why, if it's a nice to have, it's not adopted as much as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, another question that is not on the list, Christoph, so you don't need to look at it. Uh, in what way are your companies affected by the ship shortage? Is it also affecting your companies, Christoph? Well, obviously, what, what we see is uh, that on the customer side, um, the vehicles are not, not showing up as expected. Uh, that obviously is, is a difficulty. And um, as we are in the IoT business, uh, we are in, in a certain way affected as well as, as the technology we are using is using semiconductors as well. But the good thing about this is um, that uh, we can make use of the embedded uh, telematics unit in the vehicle. So with a direct connection to the OEM systems, that's when you don't need a retrofitment hardware anymore. So to answer your question, yes, there are some effects, but we are able to compensate with different technologies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's also the reasoning, as we now see, that fleet customers uh, needed to extend the contracts due to the pandemic, now perhaps also with chip shortage, that the, uh, probably the need to control driver behavior and the need to control the state of the vehicles and the state of the fleet via data is becoming even more crucial than it was before and can bring more added value. Is that also how you look at it? That's why I said if you redo the survey, we will see different numbers. Um, the, this type of technology that we bring in the market was seen before um, as like something that we understand it needs to be uh, deployed within our system, but is not critical for our business. Until the short the pandemic and the, the shortage of the chipset, which generated an impact on every, everybody everywhere, he, what, what he did surfaced how the supply chain was fragile. So what we have done for many years is to bring to other parts of the world's workforce to reduce cost in production, but we generated massive complexity into the logistics because we need to bring the goods back. And the pandemic simply showed ourselves the problem that we all had. So we knew this was complex. We knew this was difficult. Now, as soon as one factory stops, what you see the effects today is that short uh, manufacturers, automotive OEM, they stop uh, producing cars. Uh, the chipset are taken by the traditional owner of the chipset, the Samsung, the Apple, the Googles of the world, not Google, but like the Huawei of the world and all other are getting impacted by this. So what we see as an effect is, first of all, is the, I mean, people start storing things in warehouses. So technology is needed to understand how to better operate the warehouse, not only to get visibility for the shipment. And, and also you see a lot of behavior changed for the, let's say, staying at home, I buy online, I'm buying more, stress on the supply, and that's what, where you see congestion in ports. So the needs of technology now uh, that was available before became a must to have. And I see chief supply chain officer being part of boards like where not before. And now you see companies starting creating those uh, type of roles. That's why I profoundly believe that technology adoption will be much higher very soon. OK, thank you. Um, Adam. Like for everything in life, we want things to be quite simple, user-friendly, working seamlessly, and if possible, also cheap. Connected technology sometimes seems so complex. There is so much data, 
that can be gathered. There are so many providers. There are partnerships all over the place. It's like a jungle sometimes if you look at it. And there are doubts still around security, data privacy, and so on. What can you say to customers regarding the ease of use of connected technology in the future? So I think the important thing to, to sort of note from this is it has to be as easy and as seamless as possible to roll out technology across fleets. And that means companies uh, like Geotab, like what Three words with our technology and like here, working together to make it as easy as possible to get that technology rolled out um, globally. I think the other thing to note is uh, in terms of um, the technology sort of coming into play um, and connectivity, again, it has to be a global solution. Um, in terms of the technology that's going into vehicles and the technology that's uh, that, at fleet managers' disposals, especially from a last mile uh, perspective, um, with what's going on with sort of autonomy and things like that and drone delivery and all sorts of things like that, um, it has to be a universal standard. So rather than going market by market, you have to tackle the, market or the, global, the global market as one. Stuff? Yes, maybe let me add to that a little bit. And I believe uh, everybody in the audience knows there is no fleet like the other. There is no use case like the other. So um, it's, it's nearly impossible to offer a product that would suit every use case around in the fleets. So and that relates to the point, Adam, you mentioned about partnership. I think the industry has to recognize that it's important to deliver the right product to the customer to satisfy his requirements. And if you cannot do that by your own, then you need to partner. And that's, uh, you mentioned that, Stephen, the marketplace has become relevant um, and, and really be able to adapt to the customer's problem and not to the product you have. I think that's an important point. Mm -hmm. We also would like to add something, Arminio? No? no? Not at the moment? OK, okay. perfect. Um, Another question then that I can ask you, do you think that the developments in connected technology uh, will make the operational fleet manager somehow redundant? Not at all. Actually, I mean, what, what, what's happening in, in those years is that we are, I, I, was, I was listening to some of the uh, other presentations. When we go to those conferences, we only, we systematically hear data, data, data. Data are important, data are important. But what the data are useful for is to help us to make informed decision. There is always a person that needs to decide. If I have enough data, I can better optimize the plan of the route of my fleet. If I have good data, I can better understand which has been the behavior of my driver, and then I can help him to drive more safely. If I have good data, I can predict what is the, the best way to optimize my next iteration of the ride and therefore reduce my cost. But data today bring cost, first of all, because we need to store them. But data are needed to help people to take more informed decision and optimize. So my opinion is that this is not at all a problem. Actually, it's more because they will become more efficient. They will be asked to do more. I see this as an opportunity more than a threat, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Adam, what in fact is the unique value of your business for a corporate fleet? I can see it from a, how do you say it, a private driver perspective. But if you have a corporate fleet of 2,000 or 10,000 vehicles, what is your unique value? So uh, for those of you who don't know, sort of what three words is uh, an addressing technology company. And uh, we operate in many verticals, um, but in, in sort of uh, the fleet world, it's last mile that we add efficiencies to. So where you have a fleet operating and uh, delivery drivers uh, dropping off, you know, multiple hundreds, two, two, three hundred parcels a day at different uh, locations or even on a B2B things, so construction sites and things like that. It's being able to navigate that driver precisely to a three by three meter square where they need to drop that package or delivery off. And what that does, obviously, in turn, is uh, increase the efficiency of the fleet. It increases uh, or decreases the carbon footprint because the driver is spending less time looking for where to drop that particular package or parcel off. And also uh, increases the efficiency. The driver is able to basically deliver more parcels or deliver parcels quicker. Um, which then obviously takes the uh, wear and tear off the fleet as well um, from a maintenance standpoint. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, Christoph, Geotab is well known, of course, for its uh, marketplace, the partnerships, etc. Uh, how do you see that evolve in the future for your company with added value for the corporate fleet managers? Yeah, I think that, that relates to what, what, I, what I said before. It is important to partner in the market to provide the right solution. So we see the, the Geotap system like a platform, a very open platform with connections to OEMs, but connections to other systems to integrate different hardware. Um, so I think that's the unique value that we can adapt the system with partner technology to meet customers' needs. And this becomes ever more important as everything becomes digitized and connected and so on. So you need to have some, some core functionality that, that can adapt and, and connect to different technologies. I think that's very important in the future, yeah. Okay. Um, for you, the question, um, since years we talk now about artificial intelligence, autonomous mobility, when can we expect something, you think, and what can be the role of here technologies in the development of artificial intelligence and even autonomous mobility for fleets? Well, first of all, for uh, let's make it clear, autonomous driving technology is there, is available. Mm -hmm. It's just we have adoption problem barriers, legislation, etc. We all know that. So it's not a question of being the technology available or not. Actually, we have so much technology in our vehicles that we drive or the others are driving that we can hardly use 20%. And most of the time when we say why technology is not adopted, I think it's also a problem of messaging. On the fleet, uh, the telematics units that Geotab brings to some driver, they may say, no, you want to control me. That's not at all. I'm going to help you to make your business better. So the artificial intelligence, which is behind this, let's also clarify, you all, you all know, but I like to repeat that. So artificial intelligence is a nice word, but none of us is able to today use properly artificial intelligence. The only thing we use is, is we train algorithms to do prediction, as I said before. That's all we can do, and that's all we have to do, and that's what is already happening. So why, of course, yes, the machine, the engine, the big truck connected with a lot of sensors, uh, I live in Germany and there are pieces of the Autobahn in Germany that are where you can basically have a fleet of trucks that they, you can sleep and then you can, for a certain amount of roads, you can drive autonomously. That's fine, but that's not what you need to generate efficiency. What you need is when you plan, like he, he said, in the last mile delivery, tomorrow morning I need to optimize the load of my 500 vehicles that they need to go in three hours, they need to deliver of the entire job of one... 100 parcel because we are all being at home in the last months clicking on amazon.com and putting stress in the last mile delivery that's what the data are helping for to predict which is the route that for example that van needs to take because that i know today everybody is going to the to work which is the route that you don't have to take because normally this is a, a highly probability that there is car accident, because historically, so that's what artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's all about today, and it's already happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, Adam, what is your stake on that? Um, I think I'd add to it that autonomy is great, and as I say, uh, as Amino says, it's, it's here already, um, but there still has to be a human interface with that. Um, so again, in the concept of, of, of last mile delivery, um, you know, drivers currently, when they're delivering packages or delivering, you know, whatever they're delivering, they physically have to see that address and things like that. And addressing technology, and this is again why What Three Words was conceived as a business, uh, hasn't kept up with the autonomy. Um, so we're piloting with companies like drone delivery businesses and things like that, and they're turning to What Three Words as a technology provider because we can basically provide that accuracy with regards to the addressing. Um, and I think if you take away the human element and have everything completely autonomous, as Aminia says, it's open to all sorts of problems in terms of um, accidents and, uh, and you know, not being uh, as efficient as possible with that delivery. Okay, very good. Uh, Christoph, what would be your main lesson to fleet customers that would like now to start with uh, integrating connected technology in their fleet on a European scale? What is the first step that you can recommend? Yeah, I, I think the, the technology is only as good as uh, the, the processes it support, it's supposed to support. So I think it's very important 
first of all to understand how is, is my fleet working, how is it functioning, and what, what, what is my goal and my objective in using the technology. And once, once you know that, uh, you can implement uh, the telematics system and adapt it really to your process, to your systems, integrate it with your daily life. That's when it really makes a lot of sense, a lot of value, not having the technology for, for the sake of itself, but really to support your, your business and, and your objective. And, and that's something where a provider like Geotap can help implementing and configuring and adapting and consulting, but the real objective is the fleet manager has to define uh, for himself here. Yeah. Okay. Um, what can we expect in 2022 from your company for corporate fleets? Is there something new in the pipeline? As I was saying at the beginning, I think I understood initially your question. So you say this guy is going with his own script, not at all. Uh, I, was saying, um, I was explaining that we, here technology is a, is a data company. I mean, we build maps, so we have data. So what we have to do is to make sense of the data for partners like what three words in Geotab, so they can provide better tools to their customers. And our investment, they go through the uh, direction of not only and first uh, getting more data, but increasing quality of the data. Because it's the, what is, uh, the, the quality brings you the relevance. So the driver today is need, in, in, needs to be educated that technology is a support for him, the driver of a fleet. If I have a good geotap system, for example, um, he didn't pay me, so it's just uh, in, the, in the vehicle, whatever other piece of technology I have in the vehicle, the driver knows that he has, first of all, safety. He has a way to monitor that there is no compliance and no accountability in case of an accident. He has been following the, ro the route that we recommended the, his dispatcher to, to give him as a route. So that's what here technology does. So getting more intelligence within the attribution of our data so that when our, uh, customers like ours, they use it to build solutions like the ones that are represented here, you can have be better services in terms of being more reliable. And that, that's where the investments of your technology are going after. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm going to close this panel discussion here. Thank you for the great answers and answering my questions. Have a great conference. Thank you. Thank you.